And hello, Shark fans. It's your beloved soldier of the Inverted Cross. Wish you guys a happy new year. Yep, 2015 is here, and um, I didn't get to do a rip talks or anything. And sorry about how I sound. I'm still nursing this <coughs> really bad cold, really bad cold. But I did want to do something special, and I've seen a few people do this for them. Most notably, my favorite reviewer, Thew, one of my favorite reviewers, Thew, Thew Adams. Last year, I can't remember how he did it, but he did like the things the 13 best Transformers he got in 2013. Um, and then TFW was doing it the other day, which also helped inspire me to do this. And basically, it's going to be the best Transformers I got, um, in the 14 best Transformers I got in 2014. This doesn't mean they came out in 2014, because I didn't buy that many of the new ones. About, and there'll be some customs on here, too. But it's basically going to be the best of the best 14 I got. So, you hope you guys have had a great New Year's Eve and have a great year. Let's kick the list off with number 14. And here we are, number 14. Transformers Universe Vulture Class Dirge. <coughs> now this guy uh, was only released, the mold was only released twice as a Vulture and once in, the, in America. One was the Starscream mold, which I really wish I had, but it's pretty expensive. And then the Dirt one. I would love to see a Generations imagine of this. The reason they got number 14, it wasn't because it's like super poseable, because it's got great possibility down here, and I'll cover that in the review, which will probably be a while off, because it'll be like number 100 and something. But still, you'll see a review of it. But I do like this guy. I really like having this mold. I like having this chunky, spiky seeker. Uh, I do that to save space on the shelf, putting the the thingies up like that, but you can fold them now where they're out of view. But he's a really cool figure. Pretty hard to get. I mean, if you can get him, he's worth it. I've been trying to get him for a while, and that's why he's number 14 because I got a lot of my Grails again this year. It was a good year for Transformers. And this guy is just really cool, really good size. Maybe Generations will give us a reimagining of this mold. Um,. I really just love the way it looks. It looks really cool, really tough. And it's just nice. It's really nice. Right, this guy was actually a Christmas present. But, I mean, I knew I was getting him, so I knew he would be an awesome figure. And, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Uh, sure enough, he uh, cracked the top. Well, he cracked the list. So. On to number 13, guys. This one was Universe uh, Dirge, just in case you guys forgot. Oh, he was part of a Target 2-pack with uh, Road Buster, which was a repaint of, I want to say Red Alert or something. I can't remember. So, on to the next one, number 13. Number uh, 13, guys. This is Cybertron Soundwave. I've been after this guy for a while because I really like the way this Soundwave looks. The head sculpt is awesome. Uh, I've already reviewed this guy. It'll take a while for the review to be up. So my only gripe with my gun set now is the legs. They're a bit odd. The backpack doesn't bother me that much. I modded and removed the arm kibble because I don't intend on transforming. But yeah, this figure is really cool. I love the laser beak. The guns are cool. Uh, the other guns stored on his back. He's, po he's pretty poseable even with the backpack here. He's just a nice figure in general. I really like this thing. Took a lot to get him, but I actually did end up getting him for pretty much retail, a new inbox. So that was pretty cool. Um, I basically like to think of him in my collection as a just souped up prime sound wave, because he kind of has that look to him. Just tougher looking. And I suggest you guys get this figure, not the blaster version, but if you could get the sound blaster or the black one. Yeah, this one though is really cool, and I'm really happy that I got him. This is a figure this year I was really glad I was able to get my hands on. <coughs> he just looks... <coughs> no, excuse me, I'm so sorry. He just really invokes the original sound wave, the visor, the head sculpt, the faceplate, the chest design, laser beak, the way the guns fold up, just, and he's got a port here for a gun. So, I mean, he just really invokes what the original sound wave was. Great little update to him. Didn't like him much in the show, as I think I said in my review, because he was like a, just a DJ. 
but he was still a really, really cool toy. And we'll be moving on to number uh, 12. So let's check that out, guys. Number 12. Number 12, guys. Number 12. Transformers Generations Drift. Uh, now, this guy didn't come complete. He came with that really big sword that sucks. So I like to give him a uh, hook in his hand. I forgot everybody who came up with this. I remember M go three sixteen doing it, so I want to give I know it's not him his idea. He told who did it in his video, but now he's pretty much Cloud Strife. I think that's the name Cloud from Cloud or Cloud from Final Fantasy Seven. Um this figure I didn't care for Drift in the movie. Loved him in the comics. Uh glad he's back, I think, for the new ones he's gonna be back. Uh, let me uh, just adjust him a bit. He's a really cool figure. I love a sword body anyway. He's really posable. Great head sculpt. He just looks cool. My only uh, hope is that we uh, one day see a figure of his uh, other form, which was uh, when he was a Decepticon. I forgot his name. Um, Deadlock. I think it was Deadlock. But uh, just really cool figure. Really cool. This looks really nice. He's a really cool car former. Really good size. Uh, really glad I found him. I found him early, I think, at the beginning of this year. And... I got to say, I've really, it's, no, I, I didn't really find a car former that I liked. I'm checking my list here, but I mean, like, all lot wise, I don't even think I found another car former that I enjoyed as much as this. Because it's awesome. It's just a really, really nice figure. I would really love to have the Shattered Glass version because it's based off uh, Deadpool, which is one of my favorite superheroes. But, he looks really cool. And I would highly suggest this when they repainted him in the Drift, which is also, not Drift, uh, he is Drift, Blur, which is really cool. And he looks really cool with this sword. Um, besides that, he's got some good possibility, and you'll see that whenever I review him. So, yep. We're moving on to number 11, guys. Number 11. Number 11, guys. And this is the first sort of custom. Or this figure really wouldn't be on the list if it wasn't. Age of Extinction Custom Gavatron. I already reviewed this. I think I showed the mod off. I can't remember. I think I already uploaded it though. Um, loved Gavatron in the movie. Loved the fact that he's Megatron. This one's really poseable once you remove the stupid backpack. And he just looks like he looks pretty much absolutely like he did in the movie. Wish he was silver. Probably wouldn't bother painting him myself. But this is wild, guys. So this thing's really cool. Looks really good. Pretty good size, uh, pretty bulky, cool head sculpt. Wish he had red eyes. He's got yellow. I think no. It's really hard to tell because the light popping kind of sucks, but the head sculpt's really good. Just really cool figure, really poseable. And without the backpack, he can get in some really good poses. Um, so yeah, if you get this guy, take the backpack off. It's worth it. He looks good this way. Like I said, I I like Transformers for their robot modes, not their vehicle modes. Uh, so, yeah, he was the last one before we cracked the actual top 10 best of mine. My fate, my personal top 10 for this year. So, let's go ahead, cut away from here, and when I come back, we'll have number 10, guys. And here we are, guys, the top 10. The first figure in the top 10 is, come with a big one, Universe Razor Claw. Now, this guy was another one of my grails. I don't know if I said it about Drift, but he was also one of my grails. This guy's awesome. I really love this figure. I did add a Decepticon symbol here. Know that his name is Razor Claw. Uh, head sculpt on this guy. Really good. Just love this figure. Love the way it looks. It's big. It's badass. The only complaint I have is the arms, since they're all joined here, if you turn them this way, he's gorilla armed. Sadly, so I leave him turned like this so he can just like uppercut or something. Um, not the most posable thing in the world. You'll see that in the review of him, but he just he looks badass, guys. I'm looking to see if I do everything right here on one part of it, I'm making sure it's transformed correctly. You know, you guys know. I actually try to leave some of it untabbed because it just seems to want to work better that way. But, yeah, he's a really good figure. If you could find him for a good deal, which I did, uh, I would highly suggest picking this guy up. He's massive. He's just a repaint of 
Beast Wars uh, Tiger Hawk, I think. Tiger Hawk, yeah. But just he looks better as a Decepticon. Everything does, but just wild, guys. He's huge. He's really big. And speaking of giant figures, or not, well, not giant, but big figures, we got another big boy in the next, um, uh, next slot number nine. So, yeah. Universe Razor Claw. He is awesome. Really glad I got this and found this. Found him late this year, I think. Around November. So, yeah, he was a late. He almost didn't make the list if it would have been a couple more months. So, let's move on to number... Oh, also, I love the bird claws here. Now, enough of that. Let's move on to number nine. And here we are, number nine. Well, I, another one of my grails. You know, John Scorpionot got this guy during the uh, summer, I think. I can't remember. He's awesome, dude. He's awesome. He's just massive. I miss this size class. Uh, he's got a good possibility here, and he's somewhat limited here, but he just he looks imposing. The head sculpt is awesome. He's got the visor, which looks awesome. The scorpion tail. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, the the big big ass claws. The just everything about this guy. Wow, this thing's just awesome. He's just awesome, guys, in every way possible. Love this version of the mold. I hope I can find the black uh, repaint of him because it's a black repaint and also because it's supposed to be uh, black. Z I can't pronounce it. Zark or something. Z if it's from the G1 Japanese series, I think. Uh, just everything looks cool. The hook, the, the, uh, the slide guns here. Just everything. Just he looks like he could kick your ass. He's got the blades. Spiky knee pads, just he's awesome. He's hard to find complete too, so I got lucky to actually get this guy. And yeah, I highly suggest this one. I love it. It's so awesome. Next we'll be looking at number eight. So yep. Energon Scorpion Hawk. Amazing. Glad I got it. It's awesome. Number eight coming up. Number eight. Okay, now this one. I was hesitant to put customs, like I said, on my list that were like painted, like not like mods, but custom painted figures. Because I know not everyone has these, but like I said, I thought about this is my list of things I got this year, no one else. So we're going to do it that way. Cut it, or I'm doing it that way. I'm actually going to include customs. So here we are. Uh, number, let me see where on my list I'm at. Eight. Custom Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown. Now, if you're like me, you probably didn't care much for his design and age of extinction. He carried even less for his puny toy. That was like, this is a, a, this this is as big as a Voyager and some leaders. Uh, basically, what the guy did, he did that thing I love, where it's like the metal wash finish, a lot of silver. He took the green off of here. He uh, kept the green here, green on the back, green on the head. Uh, painted some silver. And I reviewed all this. I think I've already got the review up for this figure. Um, I still had a huge fan of the rubbery hands, but. They don't t they seem to be like they're going. Doesn't seem like they're going to like be destroyed or anything. The hook might malform or deform eventually. Hopefully, I think I said this also in my review. A third party company will take care of that because that'd be awesome. It would really fix a lot of the problems. But he's really poseable. The legs, I love the, like the weird deformed look to him. This is what a lot of should look like in the movie. Head sculpt was really good. The guy did a great job painting it. He left when he painted these were yet gold color, and I know these aren't showing up with a crap, but uh, he actually left some of the gold, so it looks like rust. I think I said that in my video review of him. Uh, really, really cool looking figure. Really worth the pickup. Uh, he obviously you're probably the top of the joints he did, and it's just a lot better of a figure. So this was uh, number eight on my list. Really cool figure. Um, we've got a, a custom also for number uh, seven. So let's move to number seven, guys. Number seven, another custom. You've probably I think I've already reviewed this. Not sure if the review is up. Pretty sure it is. Custom Turmoil. Now I know Turmoil wasn't these colors in the comics, but I don't care. This I call this guy Turmoil. Uh, he's really freaking awesome. Uh, I got this guy off of eBay. Now the chest piece I painted, and I love how the guy removed these and he filled this in. I forgot how. I added this. Um, 
this is one of my favorite customs I own. Probably my favorite custom. Uh, I added the Decepticon badge. No, I'm trying to think. The Decepticon badge is on there way too nicely. I always end up putting mine on Crooked. Pretty sure he put that on there. It just I love the shotwave mode anyway. I just like knowing that I made it into I helped. By putting this on it and the blade on it, I just made it look like a mindless brute. As always the head sculpt was great. It just looks good. The only <coughs> excuse me guys, gripe I had about this mold was the spikes here in the back. They stick out way too far and look nothing like they did on the show, which still doesn't bother me for Tom Wolf because he's a different character. Another thing about this figure, love the metal finish. Love that. I don't know what you guys call it. I always call it the metal finish or whatever, but just love this. Just love this look. Love, I love the white color scheme. It's just awesome. It's just awesome. It's just a beautiful figure. The guy did a really good job on painting everything in, all the details. Um, I would recommend the mold, definitely, but I just love it much more as this. It just looks better. So we're moving on to number uh, six. And no way, number six gets us back on track with the actual uh, not custom. Look, oh, that fell off on camera. I'm so embarrassed. Um, there. Yeah, it's terrible. Really cool. Moving on to number six. Here we are, guys. Number six. Classic Optimus Prime. The other legit version I own of this mold. The others are KOs. Uh, this guy didn't come with any of his weapons. This is the KO Shattered Glass Primes gun. And this is that uh, really bad deluxe and really bad. Uh, Megatron 2-pack, the gun that came with Optimus. It looks good with him, though. Head sculpt is awesome. It is different since, uh, whatever the camera to focus on it, but it is different from the others. It's more defined. Faceplate is, uh, has more of, like, the point to it. There's a, the joints are better, better on this. The other's quality is fine. They're not bad. Uh, but the joints, you know, are legit. You can tell. I mean, I like that sound when I pop it. Touch it, bump it. I leave the odd panels on this one most likely because they tend to. They're actually held in by like a metal mush. I don't know what to call it. It's like a metal pin knock through. Where the others on the chaos are held in by screws. This is pretty much my, one of my favorite Optimus Primes that I own. <coughs> and the main one I use in my display. He's just really cool. The Combiner Wars ones looks kind of. I can hardly wait for the Motor Master version. But I just, this is what Optimus should look like, and I can hardly wait to have Optimus and Motormaster fighting. So, let's move on. Oh, also, another cool thing. Painted rims. That's really cool. So, yeah, we're moving on to the top five, guys. So, let's, for the countdown of the five best figures I got in 2014. Here we are, the top five. And at number five is one of my grails. And I got so many good figures this year. This guy would have probably got number one if I hadn't got such good figures this year. Number five he is Transformers Animated Rodimus Prime. Sorry, not calling him Rodimus Minor. Uh, this guy's got a review. It's going to be a while before it gets up. But this figure really highlights how perfect animated toys could be at times when they really tried. Some of them, the toys are kind of meh. I mean, well, Lugnut was awesome. It was just, he was too small. Bulkhead, Vulture was awesome, just too small. I mean, a lot of the problem was some were just too small. Nothing else really awful came out of animated that I can think of. But I gave him the Star Saber. Uh, really just awesome. Awesome all around. Just really posable. Great engineer on this one. Mine, I said, I think I said, say this in my review, but he's got a little bit of a paint blemish here on his face. Not too bad. I haven't bothered trying to fix it yet. Eh, I might eventually, but he's just awesome. He's just a really just... And I still have Classic Prime here, so see the way... <coughs> I mean, was this before the stupid, like, economy crap, so they ended up being tall. He can easily, like... Be pretty close to face with Optimus. I mean, not as tough as he is a deluxe, but he can. He fits in pretty well as Rodimus Prime. And he's just. He's a really hard to get figure. I got lucky to score him on an eBay bid. But, yeah, I would highly suggest this guy. He's really, really awesome. One of my favorites. So, we're going to be moving on to number four in my collection. Again, it's really awesome. Up next, number four, guys. Number four, guys. Number four. Um, 
this ego my review and it's already on my channel for review if you want to see it. It's really awesome. Transformers Prime first edition, uh, custom backpackless RC doesn't transform, but it's still freaking awesome. Mine seems to be a bit lopsided right here. Hold on. Uh, she is an awesome figure, awesome details, awesome public ability. I'm fixing her robo boobs. It's always nice to have a fin body in the collection, especially one that's as awesome and nice as this. Prime RC was probably one of my favorite Autobots, and I'm usually not like a huge fan of Autobots, but just this one was, this RC was just really cool, really badass. And I mean, she actually, you know, fought enemies and you know what I mean, just use, really useful stuff she did in the show. Really nice head sculpt, yeah, if it'll focus, but really cool. It's got really nice paint job. The weapons are great. Posability is amazing. Just she's awesome. Like, she's a really good size for a deluxe. She's a bit bigger than most fanbot should be, but eh, I like the size of her. She's pretty cool. She doesn't. I, mean, I know she doesn't scale perfectly, but I'm not like a, such a scale. Nut. I'll take a less cool figure over an awesome one. So yeah, Prime First Edition RC highly recommend her. She is awesome. Now we're going into the top three guys. This and that'll and before number one, I'll have some honorable mentions. So yep, yeah, top three guys coming up. Here we are, guys. Number three, and this is a figure I've wanted for a while. It, this one's modded, customized a bit like Galvatron was. Age of Extinction, Leader Class Optimus. I removed the backpack. Wow, what a good figure without the backpack. This is. I love Prime in this movie because he was all like. You know, screw the humans, I'm protecting my Autobots. See, that's why I like Megatron. He was always fighting for his planet. Optimus wasn't. But in this movie, he was. Head sculpt on this guy's great. They actually include the face plates. I don't have to see his weird mouth. Really poseable head sculpt, too. Uh, the review's already done for this. I haven't put it up yet, I don't think, but I will. Everything just looks good. I wish he had wrist swivels like the first edition. Uh, that would have been much better to me than what he has. But he's poseable enough. The sword's okay. I might paint it silver just because I don't like the piss yellow color. It's already starting to warp and bend. And it's hard plastic so I don't know how that happened. Probably in packaging. Shield gun is awesome because that's what he killed Kelsey Grammer with in the movie. Uh, the chrome bits on the chest are okay. I might add an Autobot symbol somewhere to this guy. I don't really know where I could. Maybe a shoulder pad. <laughs> But yeah, if you can, I got this guy like on the Christmas sale. So if if you can find him, uh, he is definitely worth the pickup if you take the backpack off. My only complaint, and if you take the backpack off, you're only left with two, and it won't affect the look from the front. The tires are rubber. I'm so tired of the fans being like, "We want rubber tires. We want rubber tires." Screw rubber tires. Plastic won't degrade like rubber. So, also the chrome is pretty good on this one, not the first edition. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about this one. He is really cool, really awesome. He's not like so giant, like I still have RC here, that he like towers completely over the deluxes and stuff. Like he's a lot bigger than her, but I mean, the scale isn't too bad. It looks like he could like be their leader and not be like the giant weird one. So we're moving on to uh, number two, which was, number two and number one are hard for me to just, this who did. Number one and number two are really hard for me to pick between, guys. So, let's move on to that. Here we are, guys. Number, guys, number two. Transformers Go, uh, Go Prime, no, screw it. Dark Leo Prime. Uh, the swords were originally cast in red plastic. I painted those red. Uh, this figure was released in America as uh, Thundertron, which is completely stupid. Because no one knows who the hell Thundertron is. I mean, I did. Uh, I did my research on him, knew who he was, but most fans, kids, weren't going to know who he was. Kids don't know who Dark Leo Prime is, but at least if they hear Dark Prime, they're going to think, oh, bad guy Prime. Okay. Head sculpt on this guy is amazing. I uh, love the beard. I added the Decepticon symbol because for some reason they call this guy Autobot. Uh, I added a Decepticon symbol here. And the hips on this one tend to hold together better where they peg in right here. Love the look of them. I added the guns also. The, uh, these are from Top Spin. Uh, the clear plastic doesn't seem to be in any place that will cause the figure to be destroyed. I guess is the word I'm looking for. 
it doesn't seem to like be in like it's in the arms here but from what I can tell where these pieces peg in and stuff they don't tend to be on a place that would shatter like the joint is like the solid plastic here and then the clear plastic connects so it should be okay I never got the pirate motive for this this looks way better with like the samurai look to it just the paint is really good my camera doesn't do it justice it's really glossy really beautiful just it looks good guys this this is a voyager too uh, if you're lucky you can still go on Amazon right now I think there's like 20 bucks which is a it's the same price pretty much you'll pay for the uh, Thundertron release my only gripe is the head posability isn't much and another thing if you pop his head off it's a bitch to get back on I did it with Thundertron and I was like okay well this one I will make that same mistake I made that same freaking mistake guys and it took forever to get it back on but he is one of my favorite he is probably one of my favorite prime vultures except for my prime vulture modes but except for uh, oh, breakdown breakdown is pretty awesome but this one was really cool too love the eyes and this one the red wish the lion eyes were red but they're the teal color <coughs> he's still got the gimmick of take his foot off and shit but no one cares about that with a samurai so let's get on to a few honorable mentions then we'll be doing the number one transformer I got this year. Here we are, guys. The honorable mentions before number one. Um, this will be brief. This is Chop Saw. I bought the mold a while back as Brimstone. And I got it as Hunt for the Decepticons Chop Saw because I really do like the mold. And I like having them side by side. Really cool little scout class figure, guys. He's worth the pickup in this color or the Brimstone colors. He's a pretty cool little Decepticon. Love the head sculpt on him. Uh, another honorable mention. I'm trying to get what's near me. Uh, Generations uh, crosscut. I did remove the backpack because it's just on. It's just barely on there. You just can pop it off. Uh, really cool head sculpt. Love the red paint. The weaponry on him. Um, the way the door blade goes. Uh, I might have had an issue. I don't know if I don't have this. Where there's like some stickiness on the door and the paint. When I tried to wipe it off, some of the paint came off. I can paint it back on with some black. But my issue with this guy and probably why he didn't even make the top ten or top fifteen, top fourteen, the feet suck. He cannot stand on these. I have to like push him to the back of the shelf. But he looks cool. He just can't stand with the shit. Really cool though. Uh, really cool look. I mean, num. Oh no, I said number. Uh, one of my favorite characters from Age of Extinction, and it appears, besides Lockdown, I modded all my Age of Extinction figures, except Lockdown, because, well, I just went and bought a custom Lockdown that made the top ten. Hound, I love Hound, and he would have made the list, <coughs> had it not been for two things. One, the rubber beard and rubber helmet eventually will probably be destroyed, sadly. Uh, I modded the hands, by the way, I took the piece that's in there out. The uh, other complaint is, I think I, I've already reviewed this guy, and I said this in the review, but it'll be a while before that one gets out. This gun's pin is really tight, and there's a bad stress mark in it. You probably can't see it, but it's there. Uh, the other guns on the back, he's just loaded with guns. He's got two here, two here, two on his hips, a knife in his chest, and the one on his back. Really cool. Really nice figure. He's just... He's really cool. Really badass. He's not, he's not giant, but he's still a good size for just posing. He's good. He's got really good posability. You'll see that in the my review or someone else's review. Uh, number, this one would have made the top ten had it been for the just a lot of figures that I got that I really like this year. Generations of Windblade. She was the first fan bot we got, which was really cool. Uh, my only prop gripe with mine, and I don't think it is a stress mark. I'm looking to be sure, but um, I've already reviewed her and got her review before. She's just really cool. She was the first fan bot we got, and I like we got a fan bot jet with a sword. I love sword bots, and she's like Japanese based. Just everything about this figure is really nice. She's a bit small, which is okay, I guess, for a fan bot. Uh, the only problem I have is also she's a bit gappy. Yeah, she's a little bit gappy. But if you look at her front on, she's okay. And they didn't like give her like giant robot boobs or anything, but they did try up oh, my camera froze from it. But they did try to give her a female look, which is really cool. Really like to see this like repainted as slipstream or something. Which would be cool because I really want a slipstream for my collection. If not I gotta pay for a lot a lot of money for the collector's uh 
Club Prime First Edition Starscream version of uh, Slipstream. Number one, or not number one, sorry guys, uh, number, uh, no, no number, the last honorable mention, my number one honorable mention. I couldn't put the Universe Nemesis Prime on here because I've had it two or three years now. Ha! I bought Beast Wars, uh, the uh, big convoy. Uh, one com two complaints about this guy, well, the kibble is easily removed, just like the other one. Uh, two complaints, here they go. Really loose ass head. Tight as hell. It's not going to move. The waist will not swivel. I was afraid I was going to break it when I swiveled it for the first time. Uh, these won't come off either unless you knock the pins out, but I'm leaving them. I love the blue on his helmet. Love that matrix of leadership. You got the touch. You got the power, baby. Uh, just really cool. Looks better as Nemesis Prime because I like to kiss. Now, I know this isn't Optimus. I know it's a big convoy, but I just consider it like an upgraded Optimus in my collection. Really good figure. I would highly. This one isn't as expensive as the uh, uh, Nemesis Prime one. I would highly suggest the Nemesis Prime over this. But if you can't get, this is a good substitute. Good figure. Really nice. So that's all the honorable mention, guys. We're heading to number one. Here we are, guys. Number one, and I will say before I reveal it, uh, don't be disappointed because this is my list, not yours. What you got for your number one in 2014. I'm sure it was awesome. I'm sure it was a cool figure. If you went and bought a G1 Optimus Prime, awesome. This is my personal pick, and it was uh, Transformers Go uh, Ultimate Dragotron, the, basically the Takara version of the Predica Ultimate Beast Fire Predicate that we got in America. The wings, I just leave them off on this guy. It makes him look like a different Predacon. I gave him Dark of the Moon, Sentinel Prime Shield, and the Vulture Predicate Sword, uh, the second Vulture they made. Uh, I've already reviewed him. There's already a review up for him. I love the red. I just love everything about this figure. I mean, I, sure, with all their, there could have been better paint apps, of course. But, I mean, this one. <coughs> I mean, the a Hasbro one didn't do much better anyway. He could have had some like, silver here, at least. Well, or gold, I mean. I love the gold claws, the gold feet. Uh, the dragon head's a bit different colored. I wish the jaw, I might paint that black eventually. The gimmick still works where it lights up. It doesn't work as well as it does on Predaking, I will say that. Uh, but he looks pretty cool. I like his posability. I like just to think of him as... Um, I haven't wrote him into my story yet. I've kind of got an idea of what I'm going to do with him. And I'm going to give this little spoiler out because it's nothing huge. Uh, basically, he was going to be... You know how Predaking's like all the Predacons are clones? He was going to be an actual surviving Predacon. From the they survived the great cataclysm. He's really, it's really cool. I love the way he looks. He's big. I like to have him. I like him. My collection fighting primes, fighting everybody. Just really cool. He's just really just. I love the way it looks. You might not like it. You can still, if you do like it, you can get it on Amazon still for a pretty decent price. I wouldn't suggest. I wouldn't suggest the retail price for the Hasbro one. But this one, I paid like 35 bucks for, I think. And he just looks great. I'm all, he's just awesome. I'm glad to have him. Even the back kibble doesn't bother me too much. This doesn't bother me, actually, as much as uh, this. And if it was, I could knock the pins out. But uh, there's no point in it. It looks fine. I might put it in dragon mode eventually at some point. So that's why I haven't knocked any of the kibble off. But yeah, um, this was the number one. He looks, he's really cool. I like him. Uh, the least, it's done. 2014's gone, guys. I hope your year is really good. I hope you have a good 2015. Um, I've got more reviews planned. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, like eight more I'm filming today. Um, that'll probably be it for me filming anything, like I'm still be uploading stuff, uh, but uh, that'll probably be it for me filming stuff until the Combiner Wars, because I might get Steel Jaw, but the new R.I.D. show, yeah, the Fracture does look cool, hope she gets a toy, or he gets a toy, or whatever it's supposed to be in this show, that one looks pretty cool, and Thunderhoof, the uh, Deer's Buck, whatever that thing's supposed to be, is pretty cool, so yeah, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for being here this year with me, hope we'll stay the next year, um, so on behalf of uh, everyone that's helped with this channel, uh, well, the other person who really helps with it is the uh, Girl92. 
Uh, I want to thank her for uh, providing the voice for Ozzy, for helping with Rip Talks. You know, just uh, I want to thank everybody just for everything they've done to help me. And um, Baltimore made the playoffs, guys. Probably not going to get past Pittsburgh, but glad they're in. That was a nice little Christ late Christmas gift, or yeah, late Christmas gift because it was uh, last weekend. And the game is tomorrow because I'm filming this on a Friday. So, uh, like I was saying, I also, um, I'm just throwing this out there. Anybody that's got a Wii U, I do a lot of online play uh, with Smash Brothers. So, yeah, I'm thinking if I film that, I might film some online play, which will be awesome. And besides that, guys, uh, I'll keep updating you guys on what's going on with the channel and stuff like that. But sincerely, thank you. We got another subscriber yesterday. Um, so, yeah, if you watch this, thank you for subscribing. Tell your friends, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, until next year, next year, until next time, this has been your beloved Soldier of the Inverted Cross, Rip the Full Blown Freak Show, signing off. Farewell. Happy New Year, guys.